We have traveled all over Kenya to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the help they need to improve their farms, get better yields, and build profitable businesses. We will see how farmers from across the region can benefit from our experts' advice, while also learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experiences as they shape up their shambas. Karibu to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. In today's show, we will be visiting farmers across East Africa and see what farmers are doing with their maize after harvest. We want to look at managing your maize harvest properly to reduce losses and risks to your health. So, first up, we visited a farmer in western part of Kenya where Naomi and our expert Pauline Otuma inspected his store and for sure, it was not looking good. The farmer's store is not all that way clean. It's mm -hmm. very dirty. And as you look how he was arranging the storage bags, mm -hmm. they are just at the floor. But mm -hmm. with storage bags, they need to be on a raised platform. Mm -hmm. And they, like in that store, it's too hot. Oh, it's really? Not, yeah. Oh, it's okay. not recommended mm -hmm. to stretch your store next mm -hmm. to a kitchen. Like it's very hot. Mm -hmm. And when it's too hot, that warmth may affect our harvest mm -hmm. to go bad. Mm -hmm. Another thing is that our store, when you arrange the storage bags, you need to arrange the, them in a manner that they should not touch the wall. Mm -hmm. But most of your storage bags have been leaning on a wall, which mm -hmm. may cause things like termites, like uh, wetness to affect our harvest. Mm -hmm. So in case the farmer can improve on those areas, mm -hmm. I think her harvest might stay longer. Make sure that your store is dry, not wet. Because mm -hmm. when your store is wet, right. it will affect those storage bags mm -hmm. and it m might make your harvest not to stay longer, to go bad, Mm -hmm. to have some weevils. Mm -hmm. So you need to improve on those areas mm -hmm. and make sure that your storage place is well ventilated, mm -hmm. is cool, mm -hmm. is dry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've seen he has just been using the normal storage bags. Mm -hmm. Pigs bags are the better option. Mm -hmm. They'll keep our harvest for a longer period of time. Mm -hmm. And these pigs bags, you don't need even to apply actelic dust. You mm -hmm. just dry your maize completely mm -hmm. and then you you put them in your pig's bags, you tie, then you put them in your store. How do you normally handle your harvest from the shamba? When I mm. harvest my maize, for, for example, yeah. mm. I just uh, shell it with my hands, mm -hmm. then I dry on the sun. Mm -hmm. After it's dried, yes. I look for agdelic, yeah. mm -hmm. I put it there. Mixing well, yeah. and then I store in my storage box mm -hmm. and put where you saw them there. Mm -hmm. After harvesting your maize, you need to dry them while on cobs mm -hmm. for at least two to three weeks. Mm -hmm. After drying them, now you can shell your maize. As you've said, is the better option shelling just with your hands, mm -hmm. because like he, some farmers prefer like heating their maize, putting yes. their sack and heat. Yes. Some like shelling with the tractors, mm -hmm. but the reason why we don't prefer using the the heating style mm. or the tractor style, yes. they sometimes break the maize seeds. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And when they break the maize, yes. it's like the weevils mm -hmm. can easily affect those maize. Right. And after shelling the maize, you need also to dry two to three weeks mm -hmm. to make sure that your maize is completely okay. dry. And mm -hmm. maybe a farmer will wonder, how will I know if my maize yeah, are yeah, dry? Yeah. You can just pick one seed mm -hmm. and you bite. Mm -hmm. It will produce a cracking sound. Mm -hmm. When the maize is not dry enough, yes. out mm -hmm. of five bags, you may end up losing one. In every five bags, you may end up losing All one. Right. Yeah. So you, you have a loss. Yeah. At the same time, can it affect uh, you know, the, the consumer? Of course, yes. If mm -hmm. the maize is not very well dried, mm -hmm. it might cause some um, I think you've been hearing over the radio about uh, aflatoxin. Yes. Yeah, it right. becomes poisonous to a human being. Mm -hmm. Like if you don't dry your maize very well, mm -hmm. you store it, it'll develop that poison mm -hmm. status that will affect even a human being on mm -hmm. consumption. Well dried maize is to be stored in a well ventilated store and pig bags are recommended as you will not need chemicals to preserve your maize. It has two polythene liners that you must tie well and separately. Store the pig bags on a pallet in a clean store. Ensure your pallets are high enough at least 5 inches above the floor. Always leave a scouting space between the wall and the sacks. Aflatoxin is a very dangerous fungus and it most occurs from poor handling of your maize after harvest. 
You can get a pix bag like this from an aggravate near you or you can get in touch with Aishamba on 21606. Selling your maize when prices are better is more profitable. But how do you store your maize as you wait? We moved on to another farmer, Frederick, with our expert Jafet Nyamogo. He inspected the store. Frederick had similar mistakes as our earlier farmer. Jafet, yes. So, what do you think? To store the maize properly, dry the maize completely on cobs before shelling and putting it in tightly tied bags in a clean store. Arrange your bags horizontally on a raised platform or pallets. Ensure the sacks don't touch the walls or the floor. If you use ordinary sacks, remember you must use chemicals to protect your maize from pests and diseases. But chemicals are not always safe for your health. So is there a better way of, you know, of uh, keeping the green? Hamatic bags like pigs will hold up to 90 kilograms of maize. If the bag has been used before, check if it's clean and for holes. Do not wash with water and use immediately. Put the two inner liners in the outer bag, fill in your maize, press to remove air, but leave enough space to help with tying. First, tie only the inner liner tightly, then the second inner liner, then the outer sack. Now your maize is ready to be stored for longer in a clean store and wait for prices to improve. At the place of storage, mm -hmm. yeah. should there be some space from one bag to another bag? Mm -hmm. With that one, there is no problem provided okay. you arrange them, they should not be standing up because they can fall down easily. Okay. So you need to lay them to be flat, flat. yeah, mm -hmm. and then you can put one on another, yeah. depending on the amount of uh, bags, you, the, the number of packs you have. So we encourage our farmers to store three packs of maize mm -hmm. until March next year when we anticipated that the prices will be high. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that for me is three by three. That's the meaning of three, three by, by three. three. Yeah. Uh -huh. So if you make a double price, this money is going to enable you either to pay school fees to your child, mm -hmm. or you can use this money to build a house. If you don't have a cow, mm -hmm. then the, the money will enable you to buy a cow. Yeah, I'm getting. I'm You're getting now. Yeah, getting. I'm very comfortable. Yeah. yeah. Most farmers lose at least a third of their harvest every year just because it is not stored properly. For every three bags, you lose one. This farmer has done very well. But he brought in Eliud from CGA, Cereal Growers Association, to just see if he can do better. Stephen knows how he can make more money if he stores his maize for better prices. But if he loses part of his maize due to bad storage, rats or weevils, it won't help. We control the weevil via the pig's bags. You can see there are the two uh, polyvinyl papers inside here. They are not going to allow air inside. Mm -hmm. So you know every living thing, uh, Naomi and Steve, mm -hmm. require um, air for it to survive. Right. So mm -hmm. if you use this bag, it makes the, 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 the weevil suffocate inside and even the eggs. Remember, when using hermetic bags like pigs, the maize must be clean and dry before you put it into the hermetically sealed bags. We cross the borders to Tanzania. We want to see how they do it and if there's something we can learn from them. Welcome back to Shamba Shepa. Maize is a staple crop for the whole East African region. Every countryside landscape has patches of maize plots of various sizes. But all the hard work sometimes goes to waste after harvest. Many families harvest and store their maize so they can consume it throughout the year. Some dry and sell their maize to get cash. But maize that is poorly dried and stored is very dangerous. They develop molds. And these molds produce poisons like aflatoxins. We have seen how farmers in Kenya store their maize. We visited Tanzania and learned a few tricks. Many farm families store their maize so they can eat it 
throughout the year. Some dry and sell their maize because they need cash. But maize that is poorly dried and stored will develop molds. These molds produce poisons called aflatoxins. Aflatoxins have brought big problems for many people. When we drink the milk of sheep, goats and cows, it is a problem. When we eat their meat, it is also a problem. Even those animals get diarrhea, so aflatoxins are a problem. As our health and the health of our animals are at stake, let us learn from experienced farmers in Tanzania how to properly dry and store our maize. Be aware that molds that cause aflatoxins live in the soil and they may already attack the maize ears before harvest. <laughs> The maize changes color and then it gets completely destroyed. So it cannot be used for animals or for people. That is why we start to separate our maize during harvest. At harvest, sort out and destroy all ears with discolored grain. If only a part of the cob is infested, remove the bad part. You may decide to remove the husk if the ears will be shelled within three months. Always keep the husked ears out of the rain. Dry the maize ears on a clean mat or tarpaulin. Never let the maize touch the soil as molds that live in the soil will get on the grain and aflatoxins may develop during storage. Before shelling, dry the husked ears in a single layer for several weeks depending on local conditions. Turn the ears often so they dry evenly and cover them at night so they don't get moist. Some farmers build a raised platform with wooden beams and walls made with maize stalks. Because aflatoxins comes from the soil, I make a drying platform to put the maize up. The maize will be safe as animals cannot easily enter. And it dries well because if you put it on the soil, it gets moist. If maize is piled in a thick layer, it may take as long as two to three months to dry. Make sure that the maize is well dried before shelling it. If there is still a chance that it will rain, you may dry the ears indoors in a well-ventilated room. When the kernels come loose from the cob while turning over the ears, you know that your maize is ready for shelling. Let us listen to Mrs. Maida from Babati district why we should only shell maize that is fully dried. Do not shell the maize before it is fully dried, because if you shell maize, either by machine or by beating the maize in bags, the kernels tend to break when not fully dried. And if they break, they will absorb moisture and get aflatoxins.
So the maize has to be fully dried so that weevils and aflatoxins will not affect your maize. Spread the kernels in a thin layer less than half a finger deep on a mat or tapolin and leave them to dry for a few more days. After shelling, the part of the kernel that was hidden inside the cob still has some moisture. If you directly store your maize, this part will be the first to absorb moisture and cause aflatoxins. But if you dry the kernels after shelling, even the part that was hidden inside the cob will dry and your maize will be safe. Stir the grains every hour so they dry evenly. Never let the grain get wet. At night, and whenever it is going to rain, cover the grain with a second sheet. Or move the grain to one side and fold the sheet over the top. If my helpers are there, I can bring the maze inside. But when I am all alone, I move the maize on one side of the tarpaulin and then cover it with the other side. Weigh down the edges with wood or rocks so the wind cannot remove the cover. Grain that is not dry enough will develop molds when stored. There are some simple ways to check whether the kernels are dry enough for storage, as Christina Tua explains. You can bite. When you bite, you can see that it is dry. Even when you shake them in your hand, like cha-cha, like coins, they hit each other. Then I know that this maize will not get destroyed when I store them. We know the grains before putting them in storage. Christina Tua stores her fully dried maize in an airtight triple bag off the ground. Properly close the two inner plastic bags before closing the outer protective bag. Woven sacks are highly vulnerable to insects and rodents. Grain stored in these bags will also more easily develop molds. When you see weevils, it means air penetrates, and if air enters, there is also moisture and aflatoxins will develop. Other containers, such as plastic or metal drums, are also airtight. Some use oil gallons. They wash them well, dry them and put the maize in the gallons. When you place the gallons on pieces of wood on the floor and when you close them well, your maize will easily stay safe for six months or more. In her courtyard, Camilla Gastina has made her own airtight silo. On the inside, it is made waterproof, so air cannot enter. We made it with cement, sand and lime, so that air cannot penetrate, not even a bit. So you store your maize well without getting these aflatoxins. Members of the Gendi Cooperative keep a little maize at home in metal silos without using any chemicals while they sell most of their harvest through the cooperative. Our cooperative has good technologies to store products. We use pallets, we have a moisture meter and we teach our farmers about aflatoxins. 
so they store their products safely. We check the moisture by using a moisture meter. Instead of a farmer bringing the whole maize harvest, they come with a sample for testing the moisture. To store maize safely, it should have less than 13% moisture. This means that the maize must be very dry. The cooperative also trains its members how to know if their maize is dry enough by using the salt and bottle method. To show farmers, the trainer uses two batches of maize. On the left, the first sample of maize is dry enough to be stored. This has less than 13% moisture. On the right, the second sample is still too moist. For each sample, he fills a third of a clean, dry glass bottle with grain using a spoon and funnel. Never use your hands as these will add moisture. Add two tablespoons of dry salt. Close the bottle and shake it strongly for one minute. Leave the bottle to rest for 15 minutes. The first sample shows no salt sticking to the bottle. While in the second sample, with maize that was still too moist, the salt clearly sticks to the bottle. This grain is not ready for storing and you need to dry it longer. Remember that molds need moisture to develop. If you properly dry your grain and keep it airtight during storage, your maize will be perfectly safe to eat. So, what have we learned? Molds that live in the soil cause aflatoxins on our maize even before it is harvested. Sort out any ears with discolored grain or remove the infested parts and destroy them. Always dry your maize ears off the ground, protected from the rain and moisture during the night. Broken grains easily absorb moisture and cause aflatoxin. So, only shell maize that is fully dry. Dry the kernels on clean mats or tapolins until they are fully dried. Grains that have less than 13% moisture are safe to store. If you don't have a moisture meter, you can use the salt and bottle method to check if the grain is dry enough for storage. Keep your fully dried grains in airtight containers off the ground. We women should make the effort because as mothers, the whole family depends on us. So we have to make sure the food which we feed our families is safe.